welcome back friends we will be starting in this lecture the soils of india and this lecture will be divided into two parts initial part regarding the soils which the initial part of the soil which has to be covered in physical geography i have not taken biogeography because this is not required for the general studies paper but what is required is some basic information of the soil and i will be giving you some extra information so that the you can you you will be able to answer any kind of a question in the soil because you will be understanding the concept of the soil now before we go to the soil in india this is what is required in the general studies paper you should know what kind of the questions are asked in the examination both in the preliminary examination as well as in the mains examination so look here in the i will first start with the preliminary examination in the preliminary examination or it is better known as the prelims examination in the prelims examination they will ask you some type of the questions that is the what constitutes or the different soils in india different soils in india so where are they found where are they found first and if the second question and what are they made up of they are rich in certain minerals or they are rich in for example what they constitute of whether they are rich in potassium nitrogen etc whether they are poor in nitrogen potassium etc that is their composition is their composition the third question which they ask you generally not a part nowadays of geography but i am not leaving it for any other teacher it is more of part of an environment ecology is that the soil erosion and degradation methods what are the methods of soil conservation different types of the methods of the soil conservation this is what they can ask you in the examination in the preliminary examination so focus on you on this part what are where are they found you will be it is again a conceptual part because in the in this lecture itself i will explain you the distribution of the soils composition it is bit factual but again there are some concepts like the concept is that indian soil is generally poor in nitrogen nitrogenous fertilizers therefore india is the largest importer of urea means we import urea urea the government also gives subsidy because indian soils as such they are poor in nitrogen some of the soils are rich in humus some of the soils are not poor in are poor in humus and this application part which soils are rich which soils are poor etc this you will you will have to apply little bit of a geomorphology and the methods of the soil conservation it is the factual data it is a, so the factual data here i will give you some of the methods you can look it on your own what are the different methods but generally examination does not go too much deep into it now the mains examination question in the soils in india are again the question for the mains examination for the different soils in india is regarding distribution of soil in india a simple question can come the distribution of soil in india the second question which can come in this part is regarding the give the distribution of black soil or alluvial soil or the laterite soil that is specific soil can be asked for a short note for a short note and the third question which can come here is the is again related to environment ecology that is the method of soil erosion method of soil conservation and the problem of desertification etc in india that is the concept of soil erosion and conservation 
so you can see in the soil chapter there is a there is a kind of a convergence or it is in kind of a sameness in the questions which have been asked in the prelims and the mains examination so let us focus on what is asked in the examination and let us study the chapter of the soil now in the chapter of the rocks and in the chapter of weathering we learned that the rocks are break broken down due to weathering and erosion into the smaller particles now this weathered particles which is a mixture of rocks which is a mixture of the top layer of the rocks plus some organic as well as any organic matter is known as soil so what is a soil the loose top layer of the rock is known as soil so let us study what is the soil so the soil as you can see the soil is the top thin layer of the earth's crust comprising of the rock particles that is non living so inorganic with organic matter that is the soil may have decayed plants the soils may have decayed animals on it the soils may have remains of a dead animals which have been decomposed by the bacteria the soils may have fallen leaves which have been further decomposed by the bacteria and thus therefore we say the soil is the thin top layer of the earth's crust fine comprising of a rock particles mixed with organic matter what do you mean organic matter the matter which is, has been derived from living beings so that is known as an organic matter so it the soil you remember consists of organic plus inorganic matter it consists of both organic and in organic matter and in organic matter it consists of both organic and in organic matter what is an in organic matter here the rock particles are the in organic matter now sometimes a simple question is asked what is the study of soil known as the study of the soil is pedology is the study of the soils so i'll come to the second point now the pedogenesis is the process of soil formation that includes variety of process such as weathering leaching calcification etc so you have to remember that weathering erosion leaching etc this processes will result into formation of different types of the soil now come to the next slide there are different types of the soils based on the rock particles based on the climate the soils will be of a different type some of the soil you go down and take out some of the soil will be very dry the particles which the soil made make which make the soil this particles will be big sometimes the particles will be of a very very fine size while sometimes the particles will be of the medium size as per the moisture content so what does the particle size determine the size of the particles determine whether water whether air can pass through the soil as per the as per the moisture content some soils are silty soils some soils are like a sandy soils some soils are not silty at all while some soils are in middle and therefore on this basis you can see here we divide the soil into the sandy soil clay soil and the loamy soil and the loamy soil in this in this you will also learn that which soil is considered best for agriculture so take down some of the important points we will do this now if the soil contains greater proportion of particles it's it's it is it is made up of big particles then it is known as an sandy soil now the sandy soil are made up big particles means they are it is made up of granules that contain small rock and mineral particles obviously because there is less moisture in it less weight because sand does not have a moisture that is why rain or sand can be easily blown by the wind the because of less moisture the sandy soils tend to be light well aerated means air can easily pass and dry so the bigger particles which soil has the biggest of all particles it is the sandy soil these are granular these are small has having small rock and mineral particles they tend to be light well aerated and dry if the party proportion of fine particles that is extremely fine soil is relatively higher then it is known as a clay soil that means the fine particles is higher is known as clay soil so what you have to remember 
clay is made up of fine particles so that is why because it is made up of extremely fine particles water pot pot of a water or matka what is known as it can hold water because the finer particles in the clay does not allow the water to pass so it is made up of fine particles remember the finest of the soil is clay soil and therefore during our when we were kids all of us were used to play with the clay toys how we used to play we used to make that clay wet wet and moist so that it could be molded in any shape so if a portion if the portion of the fine particles is relatively higher then it is known as clay soils clay soils particles are smaller tightly packed and therefore hold more water than the sandy soils they will hold more water neither very dry soil nor with a very wet soil is good for plants neither it is good for human beings if you if if you want to if which soil is best bahut hi dry ya bahut hi wet so anything in excess is bad so uske beech mein ek the middle soil is good and what is this middle soil it is in the last point if the amount of large and fine particles is about the same then the soil is known as a loamy soil that means the loamy soil has about the same amount of particles then it is known as an loamy soil loamy soil is a mixture of sand clay and silt now this is very important from your examination point of view that is what is the loamy side loamy soil made up of let me wear the glasses because lights are too much so see the loamy so loamy soil is made up of is made up of mixture of sand clay and silt so this is very important line from your examination point of view that it is made up of sand clay and silt what is a silt silt is found on the river bed a very small a very fine soil which is called due to river erosion is known as silt and the loamy soil is made up of all sand some particles of clay and some particles of silt because of this it has the right water holding capacity and if it has the right water holding capacity we get the answer in the third point that it is the best soil for plant growth it is the best soil for plant growth so sandy soil extremely dry soil clay soil very moist soil we require a better middle soil that is the loamy soil which is a mixture of sand clay and finer soil that is the silt and it has because it's the, it has the right water holding capacity we say that this soil is considered best for the growth of plants now this are the three types of soil this diagram is just for you so that you can get an idea so you can see the sandy soil is made up of big particles on other hand at the extreme the clay soil is made up of very very fine particles so sandy soil you can see in the diagram it is dry clay soil is wet it is like a mold molds by because it is wet while the loamy soil is is a mixture of both big particles and the smaller particles and you can say it is neither very wet nor very dry is where the molds in that loamy soil is somewhat smaller and therefore plants can easily breathe in it they can the minerals can be easily transported it does not get water logged and therefore loamy soil is considered best for agriculture loamy soil is considered best for agriculture now if we study the soil the soil is made up of different layers if this is the top layer where we will live if this is the top layer where we live where there are plants etc and the inside layer that is the bedrock is present which is in which is inaccessible to us because it is buried deep inside so from the top to the bottom inside the soils is made up of different layers and what are these layers of the soil it is the o layer o layer uske baad it is the a layer is after that it is the e layer it is d layer c layer and the r layer so what is it for example if this is where we'll stay if this is our house if this is the land this is these are the human beings then inside the soils will be made up of 
O layer. After that, we have the A layer. After that, we have the E layer. After that, we have the B layer. After that, we have the C layer, and the last layer will be R layer. Obviously, the thick, the, the O layer is not at all thick. O layer is what when we walk on the soil, we see dried plants or the plant leaf, decomposed organic matter. We cannot see the uh, we cannot see the dead bodies because the organic matter is decomposed, but we can see partially decomposed leaf, etc. So that layer is known as O layer. Why the word come O layer comes from? O layer is the word. O layer it is called because it is made from the organic matter. That means the organic matter means the matter which is, has been again derived from the living beings. And because it is made up of an organic matter, generally the organic matter what falls from the top is the leaves of the plant. The organic matter adds an important constituent in the soil and this constituent of a soil is known as humus. So remember for your examination that the O layer is made up of humus. O layer is the uppermost layer. It is an organic layer. After that O layer is the top soil. It is the A layer. So the next question in the preliminary examination will be which layer is known as the top soil. What, which layer is known as the top soil? At the top we have O layer, but O layer is not made up, is not the constituent of soil. It is actually what? Organic matter which is there on the top of the earth. So the leaves and etc. are falling and this, the, this is the top layer. But actual soil starts from the A layer and therefore the A layer is known as the top soil. This top soil consists of humus, living creatures and also inorganic minerals. This is important. It consists, it consists of humus, living creatures and inorganic minerals. So, if the question comes, earthworm is found in which layer? A layer, C layer or R layer? Living creature, earthworm? It is found in the A layer. Which soil is known as the top soil? A layer is known as the top soil. So, repeat with me. A layer consists of both organic and inorganic matter. What does it consist of both? Organic and inorganic matter, A layer. Which layer is known as the top soil? A layer is the top soil. A layer is top, top soil. Now, Now in this the top layer which is known as the A layer, sometimes the particles which are there in the top layer that is the A layer, this A layer soil is made up of different particles. This all are washed by very heavy rainfall by the water and it is carried downwards. Water will go deep inside, it is carried downwards. So when this the minerals which are carried downwards, they get accumulated in the transition layer which lies between the A layer. That is, this is the A layer and between the B layer, this is the, this is the organic layer, that is the top layer. So, such a zone, such a zone is known as an E layer, such a zone which consisted, which consists of the leached materials is known as the E layer. That is the materials come downward from the A layer. So E layer is known as elevated horizon. It is known as an elevated horizon. So you can see, remember E stands for elevated horizon. It's simple to remember. You will have to use such tricks because, because the UPSC examination is even, even the factual information UPSC is highly demanding. So remember the E layer is elevated layer. What E layer is a E horizon. It is famous for which process? Leaching process. What is the process of leaching? We will come to that in this lecture itself. That is, it is a zone of leaching where the materials move downwards. It is the zone of leaching. Leaching is the process when the material move downwards. So the E layer is a zone of leaching where the material is moved downwards. Now then is the next layer that is the B layer. 
what is this B layer known as? This B layer is known as a subsoil. The B layer is known as a subsoil. If the A layer is known as a topsoil, because remember it is the topmost alphabet, so topsoil. A layer ke baad E layer. Uske baad alphabet mein A ke baad B aata hai, B layer, sub alpha, that is after A, after the top it will be sub, subsoil. Now the subsoils consist of iron, aluminium, humic compounds are accumulated and clay is leached down from A and E varieties. So for examination you should remember this part is generally asked, the structure of the soil, this is generally asked only for the preliminary examination. So remember B layer is known as a subsoil. B layer is known as a subsoil. Now, from where have this all soils that is the A layer, E layer, B layer have been derived? They have been derived from the parent rock material. The rock was broken down to form the soil. The rock which was which is lying now below, it was broken down to form the soil. So this rock which was lying below, this C layer was broken down into small particles to form soil. On that soil on the topmost layer leaves or felt, dead animals were buried, decomposed to form O layer, but now this, the origin of the soil occurred due to breaking down of the rock and therefore the C layer is known as a parent material. It is known as a parent material. Now, this it consists of the broken down rock, that is it is made up of the weathered parent material, which in which there is a partial breakdown of inorganic matter. See here. There is a no organic matter here. There is no organic matter in the C layer. So O layer, organic layer. E layer, uh, after that A layer, A layer is a topsoil. A ke baad it is E layer zone of ele elevation, elevation that is zone of leaching. B layer is the subsoil where the leached material will accumulate. C layer is the parent rock. And after that parent rock, if this all are broken, the downmost layer is not broken. The downmost layer is a big thick rock. It is not broken. It is an continuous rock which has not been broken down. Now this layer which has not been broken down is known as an R layer. And it lies deep inside the earth. Therefore it is known as an bed rock. It is not broken down. See that is why I have shown this. The I have made this design to show that so that you can remember in the examination that it has not been broken down. It has not been broken down. It is known as a bed rock. So the R layer is the innermost layer inaccessible. So the UPSC can ask you a simple question. Which layer is inaccessible? It is the R layer bed rock which lies at the bottom. It is the unbroken layer. And therefore, it is in a compact form and therefore I have drawn the structure of a rock like a well-jointed rock is there. So this is how the structure of a soil is. Let us revise it again. So that, now the, you know, so that you won't have to spend the time again. Repeat with me. The topmost layer of the soil is the O layer. It is made up of organic matter. Means living matter. That which have been derived from living things. Not living matter, but which have been derived from living things. So litter, matlab, jo patte gir jate hai, the leaves which fall is known as litter. Litter, where it will be present? The O layer. O hai, is liye organic hai, is liye the name is O layer. After that, it is the A layer, which is known as subsoil. Does it consist of organic as well as inorganic matter? Yes, you can see humus, living creatures are organic matter, while Inorganic minerals is also present. That is, it is a mixture of upper ka organic matter which has fallen down and niche ka rock which has been broken. After that is the elevation, zone of elevation, that is the zone of niche. After that is the subsoil, that is the B layer. It is the subsoil, that is the B layer. It is generally made up of inorganic matter, that is, the iron aluminium compounds are accumulated and then after that it is the C layer that is the parent rock in organic matter and bed rock is the lower most which is not broken down. So this is how the structure of the soil is.
Now, what are the different factors which affect the formation of a soil? Different factors which affect the formation of a soil. The first factor is the parent material. That means the rock structure from where the soil is derived. I will explain you how we just know the factors which affect the formation of a of the soil and then we will study how the different factors which have given rise to different soil formation. So the first factor is the parent material. Parent material means the rocks from which the soil is formed is known as a parent material. The rocks from where the soil is formed is known as a parent material. The second factor which is there is the relief. Relief means slope. Relief means slope. Now we, you consider this two types of a slope. One is a steeper slope while one is an extremely flat land or a gentler slope. Now where if I, if the, if soil is red in color, where will be the thickness of the soil made? In the slope or in the flat land? On the slope, all the soil will move down and therefore on the slope there will be thin layer of the soil which is present. But all this moved soil which has been removed under gravity will get accumulated on the flat land here. And therefore, here you will have thick layer of a soil. You will have a thick layer of the soil. So remember, the soil won't be well developed on the steep slopes. On steep slopes. There will be thin layer of the soil, not a very well developed soil, while there will be proper thick layer, deep soil on the gentle slopes or on the plain land. And this is what we know by relief. Here the soil will be not properly developed, there will be thin layer of the soil. Here, there will be exactly opposite. On the gentle slope, there will be exactly opposite that there will be thick layer of the soil. Therefore, we have written that soil erosion on a steep slope is rampant. Rampant means it is common, it is more and therefore it hinders the soil formation. You can see it here. You can see it here that it hinders the soil formation. Example is jumble ravines. Ravines are, is a deep erosion in the soil and the higher reaches of the Himalayas. So in the Himalayas, if the question comes, is the soil mature, properly developed? When something gets mature, when it is a properly developed, then only a person gets mature, the same you can apply to the soil. So immature soils in the Himalayas, because they are not properly developed. You can see from my diagram itself, that is the, the red color soils, which are not the on the on the slopes of the mountains, these are not properly developed. While the areas of low relief, that is this part, have or gentle slope generally experience deposition and have deep soils. So, Indo-Gangetic plain, deep soils. Himalayan regions, thin soils. Deep soils in this example is the Indo-Gangetic plain. Let me change the ink color so that there won't be any confusion. So, deep soils in the indo gangetic plane. This is how the, what is our factor. Now, let us come to the third, next slide, that is, the single most important factor for the soil formation. The single most important factor for the soil formation. As I have written here, climate is the single most important factor in the soil formation. Why single most important factor? Because the climate will determine the effectiveness of the weathering of the parent material, the quantity of water seeping through the soil and the types of microorganisms which are present in the soil. So that, that is why the climate is the most single most important factor in the formation of a soil. Because consider these two areas which are having a same kind of a soil. For example, ye one, this is one area which I have marked shaded, which I am marking shaded and this is the other area which is unshaded. Now consider in that, in the shaded region, there is a very, very heavy rainfall. 
consider in the shaded region there is a very heavy rainfall throughout the year because there is a very heavy rainfall throughout the year what will be present here extremely dense vegetation will be present in this region extremely dense vegetation will be present in this region on other hand this is a region which does not get rainfall that is the desert region it's a desert region because no vegetation is nothing can grow here now initially both these regions had a same soil but yaha pe more evaporation there will be more evaporation in this region more evaporation in this region while in this region there will be very heavy rainfall heavy rainfall and therefore the process of leaching will operate process of leaching will operate the process of leaching operates in this region therefore over the period both the soils will be of a different characteristics on other hand if i take one more this region which has a normal rainfall which has a normal rainfall yahan pe you will find still different type of soil therefore therefore we are saying climate determines the type and effectiveness of weathering of the parent material in the regions of very heavy rainfall there will be more weathering as compared to the region of dry climate because in the region of a rainfall both chemical and physical weathering will operate while in the region of a dry climate desert climate in this climate only which chemical or physical only chemical weathering ke liye you require water revise your geomorphology physical weathering will operate only in the physical weathering will operate and that will that amount of weathering will determine the quantity of the amount of weathering will determine the quantity of water seeping through the soil how much water seeps through the soil and that in turn will determine the type of microorganisms which are present in the soil and microorganisms will again determine whether the soil can be weathered or not remember earthworms are known as the friend of farmers why because they take part in organic weathering because they take part in the organic weathering. so example i have given you example in arid and semi arid regions evaporation always exceeds precipitation there is little vegetation and the soil because there is little vegetation that means the soil will lack organic matter and what do we call organic matter as humus humus content therefore the soil badly lacks humus content and hence the soil will be of light color that means the students can you i am saying here the soil badly lacks humus content and therefore the soils are compulsory invariably of a lighter color that means can you conclude from this statement that the humus content gives darker color to the soils yes now that is the beauty of revising again and again maybe in the first reading in the first reading you could not in the in the first reading you could not determine the what humus content does and but if you revise it again and again you will see that how the how to read between the lines this is called reading between the lines that is concluding from the content which is given and that can come only with revision if you revise your ncert again and again you will start reading between the lines from ncert and then you will realize that maximum paper will come out of the ncert because see i will be taking no doubt ncert is in physical geography are not very good in geography part physical geography ncert has given very less but there is one ncert which is a standard 12th ncert that is land and people is a land and people out of all the ncerts you can for the other ncerts you can depend on my lectures but do this ncert very properly because 
this NCRT has most of the factual data and the factual data you cannot learn. You will have to devise ways for yourself to learn the factual data. In the future lectures, I will tell what to focus from that NCRT. So in the arid and semi-arid regions, the evaporation always exceeds precipitation, therefore there is little vegetation. And because there is a little vegetation, the soils lack humus. And because they lack humus, they are invariably of light color. So you have in a different color. On other hand, in the areas of heavy rainfall and high temperature, the soils are red in color or they are known as lateritic soils. They are known as an lateritic soil. Why they are known as a lateritic soils? Because the process which operates here is the process of leaching because the process of leaching operates in this way. Now let us see what is this process of leaching. Let us see what is this process of leaching. Now consider this as the layer of a soil. This is the, the we know that the soils are of different layer. Consider there is a top layer of the soil. This top layer of the soil is made up of different minerals. Is made up of different minerals. Now, in the regions of very heavy rainfall, in the regions where there is a heavy rain, because of heavy rainfall and alternate wet and dry climate, what happens in some of the regions, the water will seep through the soil and when the water will go through the soil, it will carry all the minerals from the top layer of the soil which can be dissolved in water and it will accumulate in this lower layer. Because of the very heavy rainfall, the water soluble in minerals in the soil, the different type of minerals are washed away by the water. It is carried away by the water and deposited in the lower layer. While the top layer may only two minerals remain, the top layer remains rich only in iron because it cannot be easily dissolved in water and aluminum. The top layer remains only rich in iron and aluminum while silica is removed from the soil. Silica and other minerals are removed from the soil. Removed from top layer of the soil. from the top layer of the soil and hence the topmost layer consists of only iron and aluminum. Now because of the presence of iron, this soil becomes reddish in color. This soil becomes reddish in color. Therefore, these are known as a red soil. This, this becomes the color of the soil is red. It is not known as a red soil. Now, but it is known as a lateritic soil. Leaching gives rise to lateritic soil, you remember. L say L, that is leaching. Leaching gives rise to lateritic soil. Leaching will give rise to and lateritic soil. L say leaching and L lateritic urine. So, so why they are known as lateritic soil? Word lateritic means bricks. The word laterite means bricks. Now this soil because of the extreme heat, this occurs in the regions of heavy rainfall and high temperature and high temperature. Heavy rainfall will remove the top, will remove most of the minerals from the top layer of the soil, while high temperature will bake 
the soil and therefore the soil becomes very hard and therefore this soil is is deficient in all kind of nutrition it is a poor soil poor soil means it is not rich in nutrients it is deficient in nutrients and it can be used only for because of its hard its hardness it can be used only for making bricks and therefore this soil is known as lateritic soil it is used for only making bricks and therefore it is known as a lateritic soil so you see how to different types of soil even if my face is not seen very fine you just see that how to different types of soil are formed because of the process of climate ek mein the same kind of a soil may give rise to a light color soil while other soil is will give rise to the leached soil remember leached soil is poor in nutrients and this is one of the commonly asked question in upsc examination that is the leaching it gives rise to rich soil or poor soil you remember it gives rise to poor soil यहाँ पे नथिंग कैन ग्रो एक्सेप्ट फॉर कैशू नट एंड कोकोनट यू विल सी उसका एप्लीकेशन इन इंडिया नाउ लेट अस कम टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड दिस इज व्हाट आई हैव रिटन इट हियर सो द हेवी रेनफॉल ड्यूरिंग द रेनी सीजन वॉशेज द अपर सॉइल एंड लीचेस लाइम एंड सिलिका व्हाट डज इट रिमूव लीचेस मीन्स रिमूव इट रिमूव लाइम एंड सिलिका एंड देयर फॉर द सॉइल्स रिच इन आयन ऑक्साइड एंड एल्यूमिनियम कंपाउंड आर लेफ्ट बिहाइंड नाउ in environment ecology section you must have seen that the soils consist of macronutrients and micronutrients when there is a combination of micro and micro nutrients that then only the soil will be good for example even we as human beings we require some major minerals we require some vitamins and we require some proper proportion of of, of, of zinc etc only iron if we keep on eating it is not good for our health we will require some quality of iron quantity of iron will require some quantity of sulfur will require some quantity of zinc etc the soil also require similarly the soil soil will require the nutrients in different proportions so leaching removes lime and silica from the soil and the soil left behind is only rich in iron oxide and aluminum compound and this soil is known as the leached soil so the presence of iron gives red color to the soils and due to alternate wet and dry climates the blazing sun bakes the soil and they resemble a brick therefore they are known as laterite because laterite literally means brick literally means brick so you can see i have attached a photo of a laterite soil and you can see how they are made into different bricks so the climate is an important factor just revise with me again climate is the single most factor so if the question comes in the upsc which is the single most factor it is the climate climate determines the effectiveness of a weathering and therefore different kind of the soil can be formed what is the process of leaching the process of leaching means the upper layer of the soil is washed in lime and silica what remains iron aluminum f e a l leaching you remember p f e a l f e stands for iron a l stands for aluminum and l e c h i n g leaching steel leaching okay that means it is rich only in iron and aluminum the next factor which is there is a natural vegetation now the natural vegetation may add humus if there is if the area is rich in natural vegetation the, there will be more humus in the soil if more humus makes the soil acidic and therefore the natural vegetation sometimes pro helps in protection of the soil and therefore deeper soils can be formed the natural vegetation to a some extent helps in the breaking down of the soil how does the natural vegetation helps in the breaking down of the soil if this is a tree this is a tree The roots go deep inside the ground and they break the soil. There are different macro organ microorganisms also present, different minerals, different acids given by the trees. Two is hilum and phloem. Do in biology, biology which what is hilum and what is phloem. So, so this. That means tree. Yad aaya. Isliye I am telling you the question. These are the common questions which are which are asked in the examination. So the natural vegetation 
is a result of natural vegetation actually what does how is a natural vegetation formed a natural vegetation is result of relief that is whether it is a steep slope normal slope climates rainfall etc so how does the natural vegetation acts the decayed leaf material adds much needed humus to the soil humus increases the fertile fertility of the soil so natural vegetation hai then it has be it can be it will result in this fertile soil so these are the factors which affect the soil formation now the next i have written somewhat in this this box which is there this is only for preliminary exam only for the preliminary exam that is in ancient times in india the soils were divided into two main groups that is one soil was known as urvara soil which was a fertile soil and the other soil was known as usara soil which was means the sterile soil urvara soil and the usara soil so you remember is me how to remember remember both of them start with u urvara and usara and remember usara jisme s hai it means sterile soil sterile means non fertile soils non fertile soils sterile soils means non fertile soils so this is the introduction to the soils and in the next lecture we will learn about the different types of soils in india that is in the next lecture we will study of the different types of the soils let us revise again factors natural vegetation is the pehle urvara usara urvara is fertile usara as as sterile sterile means not fertile then la the laterality soil due to the process of leaching climate is the most important factor agar vegetation nahi hai because the climate is does not support the vegetation then there will be less humus such soil should be lighter in color parent material that originally from where the soil comes and the different layers of the soil o a e b c r o is the organic layer a is the top soil e is the zone of elevation zone of elevation means yahan pe leaching will occur b is the sub soil c consists of the parent material and r consists of the bedrock don't rely re, 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 realize don't rely only on that you will, re, you will revise on the basis of video draw this diagram in your book and revise it and the three kinds of soil sandy soil the dry soil clay soil is the wet soil while the loamy soil is the middle class soil best suited for cultivation so this is all about the soils we'll meet in the next lecture when we start the soil in the time thank you very much